Hey, what's going on guys? This is Sendaz here. Today we're going to cover an in-depth guide on how to drag shot in Battlefield 5. Battlefield 5 games are unique for sniping where every second matters and with the TTK being so fast, you have to be just as agile to get the kill. Remember that being quick is only part of the puzzle to being a better player. You can be strong mechanically, but you always need to have good game sense and I always urge having a better positioning overall as a player. This will cover mostly PC, but the concept can be applied to console in terms of overall mindset and steps you can take to improve, such as high sensitivity, stick grips, and well, overall practice and location. Drag shots are a tool within your skill set, such as a pop shot, leading shot, heart scope, or as we will cover today, a drag shot. It also be known as a flick shot or some call a snap. A recon essentially has this as your biggest toolkit at being an extension of the assault class. If you cannot aim and get better positioning, we punish as your tool has nothing else besides this. This is why you're given a beacon and a flare to know where your enemy is. Remember to note as you practice a drag shot that doing drag shots constantly on an enemy is not exactly the most efficient way to aim. As you can see in the shot here, I try to predict the location and adjust the aim to where the target ended up. The fastest, most effective way to get the kill is to have the shot lined up before any of that is actually needed. It is a tool to be careful not to always rely on or it'll tie yourself and actually leads to unpredictable encounters. Again, seconds matter. You need to be able to counter with a drag shot and it is why it is absolutely vital. Real quick, gonna cover some settings that will help you improve your base with drag shot technique. A drag shot is muscle memory and not a shot you think about. If you miss a drag shot, it is because you're overthinking and not comfortable. So here's some quick settings to kind of get you started. I'll go over my settings just to kind of give you an overall impression and to help you decide further what's gonna be best for you. I run 0% sensitivity in game and 1800 DPI. That is 17.45 inches for a 360 or 44 centimeters for a 360. To find your inches for a CM or 360, hit a mark on a wall and spin until you see it or use a website to help calculate your mouse sensitivity, um, like mousesensitivity.com, it's in the description down below. Uh, measuring tape is always really good, you know, ones that you kind of measure your weight or measuring tape just in general for measuring. I personally prefer to drag shot my, with my arm overall as it helps my consistency. I did run a high sensitivity a long time ago and found it was harder for me to be consistent. My personal preference is I usually cramped up, got tense, or cold as it messed up my shot. My arm just felt overall more consistent. For those using lower sensitivity and speed just comes with practicing, but that's my own personal experience. There is no right or wrong with sensitivity though, running a higher sense can give you faster speed also if you are comfortable. I really want to cover the mice and the mouse pads just slightly on what I want run to help you also decide on what's going to be best for your own personal comfort. I generally run Logitech. My Logitech mice I have utilized are the G903, the G305, G Pro Wireless, and the G403. Just to kind of give a brief summary of each of the mice, the G903 was the heaviest but has the nicest well, to hold, and for drag shots on the lower sense it can be more cumbersome as you use your mouse more for hours on ends and that weight can uh, impact it just a little especially whenever you're playing for maybe five hours. The G4 through was fantastic, but I used a bungee to remove the wire. Well, the impact of the wire. I was a bit OCD when it comes to the heat of the moment. And I can always, I always really forgot to manage my cable. So not having to worry about the cable and going wireless was a huge preference of why I switched to a different mouse. The G Pro Wireless really feels like the G403. It is also an 80 gram mouse without the wire. So it's fantastic for low sensitivity players. Um, the only downside is this one is also the most expensive. And finally, the G305 is great if you're on a budget and one modded like I have on stream. I modded it to have a lithium battery, a AAA converter, different mouse feet, and remove the back end to get the mouse to 75 grams. Again, if you're on a budget, this can be a really good mouse to use. Feels great. It's a little bit on the smaller side, so if you're using it, I would recommend probably not for those that are with big hands. Again, this all comes down to comfort for to pull off a proper drag shot. It doesn't matter if the mouse has the best sensor because if you can't stand the shape or feels really awkward, uncomfortable, uh, the way you hold your mouse can also have an impact. Also, have lifts away. You can hold your uh, grip. My personal grip is a fingertip grip. I also have that listed in the description down below, so you can see the various styles and kind of see which one you currently. Mouse pads depend on the user. I prefer Logitech or the Glorious PC gaming mouse pads as they are smoother and have less resistance on them. Reason I prefer this is when I glide to my target, I want it to be fast and smooth and also consistent. Some mouse pads can also kind of have a different groove one way or the other, and I don't like having the inconsistency in the threading. For high sense player, perhaps the resistance on a cloth pad could be preferred for you, as that could be an option to identify where you're moving your hand on the mouse if you're making such micro movements. I don't prefer a hard surface because they dull over time and some parts of the map become more inconsistent. I did try a hard mouse pad and also it really ran down my mouse feet and ruined my mouse within a few months just because I was dragging my mouse literally everywhere. 
So I feel like cloth is a lot more reliable to go. Some could argue that you could help with a hard surface for a faster glide, but I go against it because of the consistency issues above. Also need for comfort and consistency. So that's a recurring theme. Some other quick settings that can affect a drag shot is the most is FOV and ADS FOV uh, being on or off. The change is how much of the screen you see. If you have an FOV that is lower, then it feels more cramped and I'll have to memorize the space further off screen because you can't see the physical target. But if you have a higher FOV, then the target is obviously a lot smaller, so it can require a lot more pre precision mentally to hit. ADS FOV applies the FOV when you're aiming down sights. So this affects when you're aiming down with iron sights or if you're using a scope, the targets will appear larger or smaller. My own personal FOV, I prefer 101. All right, so I hope digging into the mindset and some of the settings help you decide what to choose so then you can work on your way to practicing. Now, how I practice, we're gonna utilize the test range for a consistent location to practice. I prefer the 6x as a zoom as that is what I'm used to for, you know, really at any battlefield. I just happen to develop a comfort level for it. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Drag shots can exist on the iron side, but they feel much smaller in movement. Something to note. Don't go too crazy drag shotting when you have your aim already centered on the target. Drag shots are there not to show off, but to make quick corrections with your aim or react quickly if you get caught off guard and your positioning is not up to par. But of course, when the correction is well done, it really does look quite epic and it is really impressive. Now let's find a consistent target. When practicing, you wanna start off small and move in slow. I recommend when practicing not to go too crazy at the start, but doing this for five to 10 minutes a day will get you some pretty insane consistency. Start off slow so you give your hand and body time to memorize the movement and visually to see where the target. So this overall will really help build consistency. Also keep a consistency where you can see the target, then move outside where you can no longer see the target later to practice the drag shots when the person is no longer in view. Also to add, as you're starting off slow, be sure as you improve to pick up the speed faster and faster and faster until you get to a point where you're just drag shotting like crazy. But again, keep it slow and then slowly increase it um, as you feel more comfortable. Remember, movement can affect a drag shot in Battlefield, which is the control stat, also for snipers. I will cover the control stat at greater length in tomorrow's video, but visually I want to touch on it here as it does affect the drag shot. Note that the movement from the light and stock can really have an impact, so just keep it slow and consistent at the start, and as you improve and get better, you might prefer the higher movement to utilize the light and stock. I personally don't, um, partly because I prefer the slower end because it feels more like Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. Note how even consistency is vital to those who have a lot of experience. You just want something that just feels like home and feels natural. Remember to only start with stationary targets at the start and move slowly to moving targets as you learn to feel more comfortable. Do not get too discouraged if you hop into a game a week after, you know, a practice session and you find you really can't snap. Remember, drag shots is a way to reflex and kill, not a means to just use it whenever you want. But players do move differently than anything that you will do practicing. Be sure to note that within the test range, there are various ways that you can obviously practice um, making targets pop in various areas or maybe start centering your aim and then aiming in different directions. So there's three different sections within the shooting range that you can shoot from. Also, building fundamentals though are extremely important. If you don't have a base, then you really can't improve anywhere else. Note, as you practice, it's about fine tuning and finding what magnification can feel best for you. One setting can really impact is the uniform soldier aiming, so aim is consistent across all your zooms. I prefer not to run uniform soldier aiming just because I have played PC for a really long time and it didn't exist back then. And mentally, it makes sense for me when I zoom in that it's slower. Also, lower sense does help my drag shots whenever I'm scoped in. This is a personal preference, and having uniform soldier aiming on does help build muscle memory. No drag shots can happen in all directions from up, down, left, right. Practice each side and find out which side you're weakest on. My weakest happens to be left to right. Right to left kind of just feels the best for me, but that's just because of, I don't know, probably mental reasons. So let's do a quick recap of some of the things we talked about and some of the additional things that will impact a drag shot. Muzzle velocity is quite important, so muzzle velocity such as the Liedenfeld being extremely slow versus the Krag or the K98 that are much faster in velocity can impact how far you need to shoot the target compared to muzzle velocity, as it will require you to drag further on the target than others. Let's say, for example, the Liedenfeld is the slowest, so you'll need to shoot further out and drag shot further out than the Krag or the K98, where you won't have to as much, and it'll be closer to the center of the scope. Movement speed is quite important as you're moving in and out of cover. It does impact because it does take a moment to steady your scope. And then finally, the control stat of each gun. Just to note, the Krag has the best control stat and the Karn 88 has the worst. So the Krag kind of centers in the most so you can visually see and the Karn 88 can be a little slower. Remember overall, it's comfort, consistency, and practice. 
Hope you found this guide really helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a dislike if you didn't. Hit me up in the comment section down below. I will respond to literally any one of your questions that you have and want to help you improve your gameplay. Let me know if there's any more tips also that you want me to cover as a sniper if you want just an overall guide compared to just drag shots. Thanks so much again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.